All right, let's talk about the superior thoracic inlet. Starting with the boundaries, we have an anterior boundary, we have the lateral boundary, and we have the posterior boundary. The anterior border or the boundary is formed by the superior or the upper border of the manubrium sterni. The manubrium sterni is the first component of the sternum. The lateral boundary is formed by the first rib and its costal cartilage, whereas the posterior border or the posterior boundary is formed by the superior surface of the first thoracic vertebra. The plane of the, the plane of the inlet is directed obliquely downwards and forwards at an angle of 45, such that the superior border of the manubrium sterni lies at the level of the superior surface of the third thoracic vertebra. Anyways, um, so this superior thoracic inlet is in two halves with a cleft in between. Each of the two halves is covered by the Simpson's fascia, aka the suprapleural membrane. The Simpson's fascia is basically a triangular membrane with the apex attached to the transverse process of the C7 vertebra and the base is attached to the inner border of the first rib. And the substance fascia is important because it gives an, a certain amount of uh, rigidity to the inlet and so the neck does not puff up and down, the root of the neck does not puff up and down with the respiratory movements in the thorax. Anyways, the substance fascia's inferior part is fused with the cervical pleura and the superior surface is related to the subclavian vessels, etc. Now, if you consider the structures passing through the inlet, they are very important. First, let's start with the major viscera. For example, over here we can see the trachea. The right beneath the trachea, we have the esophagus. So, the trachea and the esophagus are structures that pass through the inlet. Also, the apices of the lung, along with the cervical pleura, also project into the inlet. They cannot be seen over here, but they can be seen in this diagram right over here. The first rib has been marked, forming the lateral border, and you can see the apex of the lung with the cervical pleura projecting above it. Now back to what we were talking about, we also have part of the thymus uh, project into the uh, inlet, although most of it uh, is part of the superior mediastinum. Right, so th this was the viscera. Now let's talk about the major vessels. We have the we have the right, my apologies, the left and the right brachiocephalic veins. We have the right brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian. These are the major vessels. As for the minor vessels, we have the we have the right and the left internal thoracic vessels which branch off of the corresponding subclavian we have the uh, right and the left superior intercostal artery which similarly come off of the subclavian probably um, this is the costal cervical trunk so probably from there we also have the posterior first posterior intercostal vein which also comes off of it my apologies doesn't come off of it it basically drains into the brachiocephalic which is why it kind of projects into the root of the neck also we have the inferior thyroid veins which can be shown not in this diagram unfortunately in this one over here we can see the inferior thyroid veins as for the nerves we have the phrenic nerve phrenic nerve, the right and the left phrenic nerve and the right and the left vagus, they basically also enter through this root. We also have the sympathetic trunks which cannot be seen at both the right and the left and the first thoracic nerves which basically ascend upwards so they can become a part of the brachial plexus. Also we have some muscles which project or which are passing through it. Two of them are over here, the sternothyroid, the sternohoid. We also have the longest collar.